so my name is Gonzalo, I'm 23, I come from Portugal, and I'm currently doing a traineeship in Dakar, in Senegal. Could you first make a comparison between the youth in Europe and Africa, really shortly? I think to, a, to some extent, youth will be used anywhere. Um, and so much of the same interests will be, will, will be shown everywhere. It's just maybe that the difference in background will change the extent to which these interests are, are perceived or, or experienced. Um, so for example, um, and obviously it's, it's a big generalization, but sports, for example, every, every most countries, most kids like sports. But in Senegal, for example, I've noticed it to being taken a lot more seriously than, for example, in Portugal. Uh, and that you see a lot more people working out outside, uh, playing football, uh, training every day from small kids to old people, um, which you also see in other countries, but not that I've, I haven't seen to the extent that I've seen here. Uh, maybe, of course, it's because football is huge here. And so for many kids, it's seen as a way to escape uh, a certain level of poverty, for example, perhaps um, they have big role models in, in athletes that they have. And so maybe that's, that's one way that I've seen uh, a difference despite the interest being the same. Um, same thing for, for families, for example. I think the, the well, that also changes in Europe, uh, depending from country to country. In, in, in here, I've noticed a, a level of attachment to the family, much greater level of attachment, um, perhaps uh, an expectation that people should take care of their family not just their direct family, but their extended family as well, to a much greater extent that we're seeing in, in Europe. Um, people are, but this is in general, not just for young people, uh, they seem to be more, uh, at least overtly religious, in that they fulfill the, the traditional ritual, uh, religious rituals, in a way that you also don't really see in Europe uh, much. I can only speak for, for Dakar, I think, because also Dakar is, is a sort of regional hub. It's a very cosmopolitan city. Uh, it's perhaps different from other places in, in, in Senegal and certainly other places in Africa. Um, there's many people here who uh, have family in Europe, mainly in France and Italy. There's also a big expat community here. Uh, many dozens of thousands of, of people, mostly from France, but from everywhere. Um, and so there's a, a certain proximity, which I think means that people in Senegal are aware of, of the youth in Europe and how we live also through movies, of course, and TV and everything, and the internet, obviously. Uh, I think the youth in, in Senegal are more aware of the youth in Europe than the other way around. Uh, in that, obviously, we don't experience much Senegalese culture in Europe to the way that, in the same way that they experience European culture in Dakar. It didn't change much in the sense that in as much as I didn't have much of a perception of African youth before coming here. Um, perhaps the only one I had is this very primitive uh, notion of just Africa in, in general and then maybe African kids that you see in National Geographic, for example, or, or something. And obviously you come here and you experience something totally different. Of course, you see those things as well, uh, poverty and you see uh, results of war and, 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 and lots of, of, of tragic things, but you also see a different side of it. You know, the sports, as I said, culture, um, there's a big uh, cultural community as well, lots of, of, of young independent creators in every uh, arts, uh, art form and art field. Um, of course, also the social safety net that we benefit from in Europe isn't as present in Africa, which means that it's perhaps easier to be an independent creator in Europe, knowing that you have certain, a certain safety net behind you. Whereas in, in Senegal, you have to, you're expected to work from, from an earlier age to provide for your family. Um, while there are government, while there is government support, it's not, we, they don't benefit from it in the same way that we perhaps benefit from it in Europe. As I said, because they, here in Senegal, uh, at least in Dakar, uh, to me seem to have a greater, or a greater awareness of 
European youth and European culture than we have. Um, obviously, because most of them in Senegalese have family in Europe, uh, they go to France, they come back. Um, it would be interesting to do the level of the sort of, of, of exchange that we maybe see in Europe with Erasmus, for example, done in Africa. Um, I've personally met many people who are here who I was surprised at the amount of Europeans, honestly, that, that are here. And there are lots of them working in hospitals, working in companies, startups, everything. Um, so perhaps strengthening that sort of exchange would be, would be beneficial because obviously it's an opportunity to see things as they are locally, of course. What do you think this kind of dialogue could bring concretely? Well, certainly a greater level of acknowledgement. As I said, the, the only idea I had was a very primitive one of, of how things were worked in, in Africa, not just for the youth, but for, for everything in, in general. Um, and so I think it could certainly bring a greater level of awareness. And with awareness then comes obviously comprehension, uh, partnerships, uh, growth, everything. As I said, for example, sports, I think, would be a very interesting interesting thing to do. Senegal, for example, they're hosting the uh, uh, Youth Olympics in, in 2022, I think. Um, and so that would be, uh, that's an example of, of a concrete opportunity to this gap between youths in different continents. Uh, obviously, Olympic Games, it's everyone in the world. Uh, it's Youth Olympics as well, which is even better in this case. And so they all come here and it's certainly an opportunity to, to bridge that gap. And because it's something completely, you know, apolitical, uh, not ideological, it's just something that every uh, kid likes to do, play sports, obviously, as I said, um, I think that's, for example, a good way to start. Obviously, you could do the same with, with culture and, and with bringing creators to Africa, African creators to Europe, these sorts of, of exchanges. Uh, but I think starting with sports, for example, is a very good, uh, might be a very good uh, opportunity. To... Well, big question. I think the, it depends on which context you're talking about, obviously. Um, big countries, big blocks, uh, the US, the EU, China, uh, especially, for example, in the African context, are big players. Uh, you see their presence to a greater or lesser extent, but throughout Africa. Um, so in that case, obviously, you have you have big countries, but you also have, as I said, uh, individual personalities. Uh, Sadio Mane, for example, the, the football player, is huge here in Senegal. He's a huge role model for kids. So you know, people can also be be big players in the world scene, and they can use that influence to do pretty much anything and, and to influence people in different ways. Um, you also have, of course, uh, culture and art, uh, in the same way that you have sports and, and individuals or groups in that sort of uh, field. And those sort of fields can be influential. The bigger players will be will be individual countries or blocks uh, if they choose to use the sort of influence that they can have. What do you see as being the role of civil society? Well, civil society has a big role. Cultural elements. Uh, sports elements, religious elements, uh, everything, they can have a big influence and, and they do have a big influence. Obviously it also depends on which country and which elements you're talking about, but I think it has a, a it, they can play a very big role, especially in, in more perhaps local uh, circles and, and to a, a local degree, they can be closer to the, to the communities and they can help immediately and, and by understanding exactly what people are going through instead of it being this great sort of umbrella, abstract political uh, scene that can be more closely, uh, it can work more closely with, with uh, communities in trying to figure out their problems, bridge gaps, and, and just make those communities and, and the, the greater world a better place. What do you think would be needed for your country's well-being? My country being Portugal or Senegal in yeah, this case? Yeah, Portugal. If you want to answer for Senegal, you can also. No, I, 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 will, I will abstain from, from uh, trying to solve other countries' problems before solving my own. But um, how can Portuguese, Portugal get there? Well, lots of things can happen. But uh, I think, obviously, this, this applies to everywhere. I think that a greater involvement of, of the general public in politics, for example, 
greater awareness of what's going on, um, more exchanges perhaps with the rest of the world. Um, I think, for example, the Erasmus program in Europe uh, brings big benefits. And me having personally done it, I think it's something more Portuguese people should do and they're not doing to the extent that I see done in other countries. So it's financially more affordable for people from wealthier countries in Europe to do it. But uh, if it could be done, I think for Portugal, that would be, that would be a, very good, uh, a very good thing. And how long do you think it would take for Portugal to get that? Oh, I don't know. But um, again, if, if, if in this particular case, if we're talking about, for example, uh, Portuguese youth having greater exchanges with the rest of the world and the rest of Europe through programs such as Erasmus, if it's properly done and if it's well implemented and generalized, then in one generation you're there, because if you have three or four years of kids uh, or you know uh, teens or, or young adults doing these sorts of programs, in ten years you have ten generations perfectly aware of the rest of the world, uh, with friends throughout Europe, throughout Africa, throughout the Americas, throughout Asia, and obviously that would be, uh, you'd see an immediate result in those sorts of exchanges. Well, that's a big question, even bigger question. Uh, what's needed for well-being at a global level? <sighs> very difficult question. Um, I, know, I think in general, it's, it's very hard to answer, but if, if we're going into the same topic, obviously, I think greater exchanges uh, and, and people being made aware of, of other, not just cultures, but individuals in those cultures, obviously, you can't really generalize. If you meet one person from Africa, it doesn't mean everyone in Africa is, is like that. Likewise for Europe or the United States or China. But just being open to meeting other people, to exploring the possibility of, of developing that sort of relationship certainly it would, be, would bring benefit to the world. I don't know if it's enough or, 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 or if it doesn't have any impact on the greater well-being of the world, but I think it's a good place to, to start because it's also done something relatively easy to do. It doesn't involve an extraordinary level of, of the political capital or anything because I think in general people are willing to travel and they're willing to see other people and, and be open to that. Um, what do you think are preconditions for inclusiveness? So I think that spirit of openness and, and willingness to, to share is a precondition. I think most people just already have it naturally, uh, maybe not everyone. I think since you're kids, I mean, most people are, are happy to make friends regardless of where they come from, what they look like or, or how they are. Um, and so I think that natural willingness to, to be open, to explore it, I think it's something that has to be kept up throughout the uh, the years and not just in childhood or, or adolescence. Um, so I think that's that's one of the preconditions for, for inclusiveness. The other one, of course, is that you have a structure that allows that to happen. So, you know, those sorts of programs we're talking about are certainly needed and, and required because obviously if individuals are open to it, but there's no structure to help it, then it doesn't happen beyond the local level. So I think you need both the individual willingness and also the structural willingness to, to allow those exchanges to happen. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>